The events of Goku Black and Zamasu are now officially over and with that we head towards a more subtle and lighthearted Dragon Ball episode as we see Goku make an attempt to gather all the Dragon Balls to make a wish of granting the North Kai his life back but with that being said we see everyone else trying to hog up the wishes for themselves but the question is whose wish will be granted. What's going on Dragon Ball fans? Welcome to my Dragon Ball Super episode 68 review entitled Come Forth Shenlong whose wish shall be granted leading into Dragon Ball Super episode 69 in what will be a very lighthearted episode yet again this was a very mellow episode and i want you guys to bear in mind in case you guys are not following me on twitter make sure to follow me at unreal ent gaming that way we can talk more dragon ball super and don't forget to subscribe in case you guys are new to the channel so we start the episode off once again very lighthearted, and we see how goku is finally telling king kai that he's ready to bring him back to life and we see how king kai you know grabs him and he seems so happy about you know having to come back to life and again if you guys are expecting any sort of chaotic episode out of this it's not going to happen. But we see how Bulma is also researching and finding out more about the blue crystal ring and that apparently needed for the time machine and stuff. So she wants to see like where she can find more of that blue crystal like material. But then we also get to see how Goku also stops by to borrow the dragon radar from Bulma as Bulma hands it to him. Now, Bulma freaks out and she starts to hide her own time machine because she knows that bearing a time machine uh, goes against the Galactic Patrol. So I, I wonder later on down the road if Jocko or even the Galactic King is going to say anything to her about harboring another time machine but Bulma realized that she can't you know just ask Shenron to uh you know help her out or anything she has to do things on her own so the episode follows with uh Android 18 and her daughter in the mall and stuff and we see how Chi Chi's there as well again very settling don't expect anything chaotic uh but we also see how there's somewhat of a sale going on so they're trying to get as much out of that as possible very similar to like Black Friday in essence but again everything is so mellow uh we see how Whis and Beer show up uh, as Bulma is looking up in the sky and she's drinking a little bit so she gets a little startled that Beerus and Whis are even there to begin with and so Beerus and Whis stop by Capsule Corporation for food obviously enough uh, and Bulma freaks out and she's still trying to keep the time machine a secret because she doesn't want Beerus and Whis to find out about it because obviously enough she thinks that they've forgotten about it but again the time machine and time traveling in general goes against the grain here so she doesn't want anyone to find out she doesn't want to get in trouble um, and we see how Chi Chi, Marin and 18 are out shopping and whatnot so Beerus and Whis come for food. Uh, it looks like they're eating crabs. Um, I, I, I've never eaten crab myself, but Beerus looks to be very intrigued by it. He seems to be playing with his food, per se, uh, as Goku is gathering up all the Dragon Balls. So, Goku gets the last Dragon Ball and returns to Capsule Corporation, but Bulma is still out with Beerus and Whis. So, poor Goku is trying to gather up all the Dragon Balls for himself, because he knows he's promised King Kai to bring him back to life. And that's how the episode started off. We see how Goku's sitting there, he's talking to him, and he says, listen, I promised that I'm gonna bring you back to life and I am and so we see how Goku brings all the Dragon Balls together and he's wondering where everyone is and uh, right then and there we see Goku call upon Shenron to arrive and the sky begins to get dark again animation in this episode was done very smoothly and just as you know Goku's trying to make his wish all of a sudden we see how everyone begins to rush on over to Goku's you know location and we see how Bulma 18 or and Roshi notice that the sky is going black and they realize that someone is summoning Shenron and Bulma Bulma leaves the restaurant with Beerus and Whis in a panic because they don't know what's going on and they give the cashier like a, like a gazillion dollars and uh, they, they begin to leave so they actually tipped the people like a, a ton of money which is kind of funny because those people that were working there that day had, had a huge tip uh, so we see how Goku explains to everyone after they got there that he wants to revive Kaiosama and that means that there will ultimately be one more wish left and everyone begins to fight over the wish we see how 18 is arguing with Roshi we see how Roshi is arguing with you know Goku and Goku is promising that he wants to bring back King Kai and King Kai is like standing there like in anticipation because you know he's died during the Cell games you know Goku brought Cell there they blew up the entire planet alongside King Kai and Bubbles and whatnot so King Kai wants to come back to life and Goku's kind of hesitant because everyone keeps you know rushing in his face asking him about the wish and we see how Pilaf, Mai and Shu are hiding behind the tree and Pilaf is saying that this is like his grand opportunity because now he can make the wish that he always wanted but then of course they begin to fight but we see how Pilaf is very reluctant and we see how he's just going in there to try to make the wish and all of a sudden he just gets knocked on his ass which is hilarious because again this is a very warm-hearted episode don't expect anything crazy like any battles or whatnot um 
um, from my presumption, it was Trunks, but we see how everyone wants the last remaining wish for themselves. That includes 18, Roshi, Pilaf, Kid Trunks. Everybody wants the wish for themselves. Everyone wants to get greedy, but at first, nobody knew that Shenron was even there. I mean, because remember, the last time anyone even saw Shenron before anything was when Frieza came back, so nobody wanted to take any chances in having something like that happen again. So everyone rushes by, and they're, and they're begging Goku for the wish, and it's funny because... I, I really think that this might carry weight into what's going to happen in the next arc, especially with Bulma trying to really hide the time machine. Um, and it's actually it's actually very curious on her end as to why she's harboring another time machine. Maybe because she wants to see Trunks again at some point. Maybe it's because at some given point they may need the time machine. But again, she's hiding the time machine in hopes that Beerus and Whis don't find out about it. Now, some people are going to say, well, this episode was boring. This episode was, you know, dragged on too much. Um, but I think this will definitely definitely play off into what's going to happen in the coming episodes of course uh but we see how goten and trunks arrive and we see how kid trunks is mad because it seems like all the adults are the ones who want to make the wish and 18 says that it'll be bad for kids uh because kids have like a wacky imagination and they're gonna wish for like all the most insane of things and, and of course she's right in a way um and she says it'll teach them to just have you know the wish and just maintain the wish and just see how the adults do things per se uh but we see how you know after after peel off got launched into the building she Shu and Mai are trying to pull him out, and we see how Roshi's choking out Oolong with his stick, which is hilarious, because then we see Pilaf get tossed, you know, like, about 15, 20 feet after he gets pulled out of the rubble from the building uh, by Mai and Shu, but even that, it didn't stop him, because he still wanted to make his wish. Now, Gohan gets uh, Shenron to heal Pan. Uh, I mean, that's kind of sorted out already, but Gohan wants Shenron to heal Pan because Pan is very sick, she has a fever, and the Earth Medicine doesn't work on Saiyans, which is very, very interesting, yet kind of stupid, if you ask me. So Gohan, he wanted Shenron to make the wish so he can heal Pan, and uh, you, gotta, you gotta understand from, you know, Gohan's point of view, you know, that's his baby daughter, you know what I'm saying? So she was very sick, and we see how the wish is made. We see how Pan uh, ends up being fine, and she no longer has a fever. She's actually jumping for joy. She flies out of her blanket, and um, she's very cute in this episode, very, very cute, I would have to say Pan is the cutest thing to ever happen in Dragon Ball, because she's a baby, she's a toddler, and she's flying around, and Gohan, we see how Gohan is nurturing her, and he's holding on to her and whatnot, so Pan says bye, Gohan says thank you, and everyone else is just stuck there with, like, you know, the notion of having this other wish happen, and um, Gohan, after Gohan gets Shenron to make the wish for him, he leaves, and everyone else is baffled, I mean, this was, this was was an episode to where Oolong was fighting Roshi, and, you know, everyone was pretty much bickering on this, and, and they're telling Goku, listen, man, you, we, we need the wish for ourselves, which is kind of like, it, it's kind of weird to me, because can't they all just gather up their Dragon Balls whenever they want? You know, like, they can easily make the wishes that they want without even having to ask Goku. I mean, they can easily get the Dragon Radar and just go collect the Dragon Balls for themselves if they wanted to, but of course they're not. So, Shenron says there's only one wish left, and for some reason, Goku starts to ask Shenron to revive Kaio, and then... 18 cut him off, Android 18 cut him off, and Goku is like, he's puzzled, I mean, he gets distracted, and King Kai is pissed, because King Kai, he wants to get brought back already, and he doesn't want to see or hear about any interruptions and stuff, so King Kai is pissed because Android 18 cuts him off, and Goku begins to again ask Shenron about the wish, but Pilaf again tries to get his wish granted, but Bulma drives up and runs him over, so poor Pilaf, Pilaf got ran over, Pilaf got, you know, sent tossed into a building, he got tossed onto the ground by everybody, so Pilaf had absolutely no chance of having any of his wishes granted because after he got ran over he's still trying to stand back up and it's quite funny because Mai's shaking up like shoes looking at him like what the heck is going on and peel off is in the ground he's pissed because he realizes that this is his only opportunity to make the wish happen and we see him leap up and once again he's trying but Bulma insists actually that uh that she gets the last wish because uh it was her radar that allowed Goku to gather up all the Dragon Balls to begin with and then we see peel off get ran over again like it's it's hilarious because Pilaf has no chance on you know getting his wish granted I mean that was always you know one of his main gripes was to get his wish granted we even saw in Dragon Ball GT although non-canon he finally got his wish but now it, it just doesn't seem like Pilaf is ever gonna get his wish but so we see Bulma ask Goku you know since she was the one that to give Goku the Dragon Radar she wants the last wish and 18 tells Bulma that she wants to wish for something for Krillin uh, but Bulma tells him that Krillin will always be happy just being with her so she she insists and she tells 18 that it's okay 
Krillin doesn't really need anything. All he really has and needs is you. And then Roshi wants to wish for a bunch of girls, hot babes. And Bulma, you know, calls out, you know, Roshi pretty much chewing him out. She says that, you know, she bribes 18 to give Oolong her panties or whatever. Just a whole bunch of wacky, tacky nonsense. And Bulma asks Goten and Trunks uh, what they would want. And they don't really know because they're kids. Um, they just wanted to try wishing for something. Uh, but, you know, we see Roshi's intending. Like, he's just insisting that he wants hot babes. He wants panties. He wants naked girls and uh we see how also oolong is talking about you know wishing for his wish and then bulma tells him like don't worry you'll have 18's panties or whatever so it's pretty stupid stuff so uh shenron also says that he won't wait for goku anymore and that shenron was getting impatient uh but bulma scares shenron into waiting for goku because she mentions that beerus is there so it's actually quite funny to see shenron all shook up and stuff because back in battle of gods we saw how uh he, how, how terrified he was of the name beerus and after she said beerus is here um Shenron was just like fine I'll wait for Goku and we see how Beerus and Whis are still eating they're eating and they're finishing up their crabs and stuff and we see how they're walking away and Beerus and Whis return to Shenron with Goku and Shenron begins to freak out after he saw them and uh Beerus actually has the blue crystal so the jig is up I mean that was something that Bulma wanted and so he we saw how he had it in his hand and we were all curious as to what that was and, and eventually we see Beerus break it um and Shenron is just pissing his pants like he is shaking and and you actually see in the animation that Shenron is shaking. So eventually enough, Beerus comes across the fact that uh, Bulma was indefinitely hiding something. And we see how Bulma begins to like try to like, you know, bribe Beerus. And Beerus breaks the blue crystal in his hand. And later on, we see how um, we see how Goku tries to wish for Kaio to come back. Uh, but Shenlong has had enough and he runs away because of Beerus. And we also get to see how, you know, Beerus destroys the time machine. So the jig is up. That is it. Like we see how quickly Beerus destroys the time machine. So Goku wasn't able to wish King Kai back to life, which sucks because there goes their opportunity. Uh, Beerus found out about, you know, the uh, time machine. You know, Shenron is freaking out. He leaves. Goku, Goku couldn't make his wish. And uh, it's funny because, you know, Shenron was so scared of Beerus that he, after he saw what he did, he just fled. And Goku was like, well, you know, maybe we'll try again next time or whatnot. And then we end the episode and we have the episode preview. Now, let me know in the comment section below, guys. What did you guys think about this episode? Did you guys think it was funny? Uh, what were your highlights of this episode? And what are your overall thoughts going into next week's episode? Comment down below. Let me know, guys. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you guys are Dragon Ball fans, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome daily content. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to slap a like down below if you guys love Dragon Ball. Tune in for the next video, and I'll be seeing you all in the breakdown. Take it easy, guys. Peace.